Objective 9.5, Core Practical. Investigate the relationship between organisms and their environment using fieldwork techniques, including quadracts and belt transects. Objective 9.6, explain how to determine the number of organisms in a given area using raw data from fieldwork techniques, including quadracts and belt transects. So ecologists work to study and monitor ecosystems, and part of this is monitoring population sizes and how they are distributed in the ecosystem. Now this can sometimes be very challenging. For example, counting every daisy in a field would take a very long time. Therefore, scientists use sampling techniques to get an estimation, which is much quicker. Ecologists use a piece of apparatus called a quadrat to take samples. Now a quadrat is very simple. It's a square metal frame, usually one meter in length, but will vary depending on where and what you're gonna be sampling. This quadrat here, you can just about see, is split up into a hundred smaller squares, which can sometimes make counting easier, especially if you're trying to work out the percentage cover in that quadrat. So let's say you had a task where you needed to compare the populations of daisies in two areas of your school playing fields. How would you go about doing that? So we're looking at populations here. Well, first of all, you're gonna mark out two uh, identical sized areas, 10 meters by 10 meters using large tape measures in, in location A and location B. And then you use the random number generator function on your calculator to choose those coordinates uh, along the tape measure. So you get your calculator to generate this random number and that's how far along the X axis you go. And then you do another random number and you move up the Y axis and that gives you a random coordinate to place your quadrat. It's very important that it is placed randomly so you don't have any bias here and place the quadrat in the same way always with the left corner at that point uh, which you've selected at random then count the number of days in the quadrat and record it in a table do this nine further times so you've got ten random quadrat quadrat readings for each area calculate the mean number of daisies per quadrat for each area and to get the total population in the location you can then just multiply that mean by how many square meters there are in the total area. If you also take some data about the physical environment at the same time, the abiotic factors, uh, then that can help you hypothesize why the populations might be different in location A and location B. Here's another task. Measure how the distribution of organisms changes across a woodland path. Now, sometimes you want to see how the distribution of a species changes across a habitat. You may take abiotic factor readings as well, such as light levels or soil acidity, and then investigate if there's a relationship between those factors and the distribution of that species. Now, in this case, another piece of apparatus is needed called a transect, uh, as well as your quadrat. Now, a transect is basically a long line. Ideally, you just use it along sort of tape measure. And instead of just randomly placing your quadrat down like we did last time with those random coordinates, we're going to place it systematically along that transect. So then with each quadrat you take along that transect, you could count the number of uh, a particular species and see how the distribution of that species changes as you move along the transect. Or you might count the number of different species you can see in each quadrat and therefore give you a sort of measure of biodiversity. If you're counting something like grass, where you can't kind of count individual uh, organisms, then you would do the percentage of the quadrat covered. And also for each quadrat, you then take some of those abiotic readings, maybe light intensity, temperature, or soil pH. And once you've got your data, you then plot a graph of the abiotic factors you're interested in against each quadrat to see if there is a correlation. So here is a quadrat placed on a rocky shore. Now there are three mussels in this one meter squared quadrat and the total area of the rocks is 280 meters squared. What would be the estimated population of mussels on these rocks? Why not pause the video now and take a minute to try and work it out. Well, it's quite simple, isn't it? You've got one meter squared here and we know the total area is 280 meters squared. So all we've got to do is times three by 280 to get our total estimation, which is 840 mussels. Here's an evaluation question though. Why is that not 
a good way of estimating the population of muscles? Well, firstly, it's only one quadrat, so it's not reliable data. Reliable data is about how many repeats you do, and they've only done one here. Data should be collected from at least 10 randomly placed quadrats. And then the average number of muscles can be calculated per square meter, and then that can be multiplied by 280 for the total area, which is gonna be a much more accurate result.